Joining me now is former Trump White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson. Thank you so much for being here with me. Every time I watch that footage of you testifying, I just think of how courageous that was and how much poise that required. So I hope when you watch it, that's how you feel as well. But I wanted to talk to you about Trump's words, because we heard Trump's lawyers today, earlier this morning, downplay the impact of his words. That was essentially their argument. And yet January 6th is, of course, a glaring example of people following his direction. You talked about this a lot in your book. Do you think he recognizes the impact of his words? Uh, thank you for having me, Jen. And yes, I absolutely, I, I believe that he knows the impact of his words. And I believe that because I've heard him say it. And mm. I think when, you know, you've his, heard him say, I know people listen to me. Or yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's evident too, from just how he's been able to get away with how often he has tweeted and the rhetoric of his tweets. You know, Donald Trump knows the impact his words have. He knew when he put out the tweet on December 19th, 2020, when he summoned the mob to come to Washington, D.C., that he was going to expect a crowd. That's why he continued pushing and pushing and pushing that rhetoric and pushing those invitations to all of his supporters that ended up coming to, J to Washington, D.C. on January 6th. So when Donald Trump says something, I think that we as a nation do a big disservice to our own constituents and our neighbors when we don't take what he says at face value. That's so important for people to remember. You, you talk in your book, you write about the impact of Trump's words. I mean, this is something you kind of explore, including how Trump's tweet about his vice president on January 6th promoted chance of hang Mike, Mike Pence, something that is haunting every time I hear it. You also write that, according to Mark Meadows, Trump said he deserves it. That's really scary. It's still scary to hear. Are you nervous? I mean, you know a, a number of the people, former colleagues, who are going to be witnesses. Are, are you nervous about their safety when you hear Trump's words and you see what he's doing out there publicly? Yes, I am. And I, I know from my experience, too, you know, the American people should not ever have to live in fear of retribution from a president of the United States or a former president of the United States. A president is here and is elected to protect the people, not to incite violence on those people. I think about myself, but more importantly, too, I think about men like Rusty Bowers, who was cornered mm -hmm. in his home. I think about Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. I think about members of Congress Georgia, on yeah. the January mm -hmm. 6th committee who needed security details, or even up until a few weeks ago during the speaker's race, how there were members who weren't voting for mm -hmm. Jim Jordan, who had violence unleashed on them, and they are Republicans just because they were not planning to vote for the individual that Trump had personally endorsed. This violence is, has become, unfortunately, somewhat normalized in our society. Mm -hmm. And I know that I don't want to raise my children or have to explain to my grandchildren why we let America get to this point. It's such an important moment to think about where you are in history. I mean, you've been out there publicly. That has not been easy, I imagine. Some of your former colleagues have also been out there publicly speaking out. What would you tell those of your former colleagues who are concerned but haven't come out publicly about the importance of doing that at this point in time? I think about, and the Washington Post put out a good story today about that, Jen, and mm -hmm. there's a, there are a few particular quotes that stuck out to me, but towards the last half of the article, there were former Trump aides, anonymous former Trump aides, but I will point out that they were given masculine pronouns. Mm -hmm. So, namely, primarily men who were speaking at the Washington Post mm -hmm. anonymously about how they might want to speak out if he is the nominee, or they don't think it's worth speaking out because they'll lose clients. Mm -hmm. And what I'll say to them, you know, I, I do understand a fear of retribution. I do fear backlash. I, I do understand their fear of, of backlash. But when we think about this next election in 2024, I don't like to play a doomsday hypothesis, mm -hmm. but it does look like he is going to be the Republican nominee mm -hmm. as of right now. If Donald Trump is elected president again in 2024, I do fear that it will be the last election where we're voting for democracy, because if he is elected again, I don't think that we'll be voting under the same constitution that we would be if we are vote if Joe Biden is elected in 2024. Are there eight? I mean, there are a number of you who have spoken out. Are you talking to I know The Washington Post talked about this and we'll talk more about that. But. Do you meet? Do you have a group chat? How do you engage about what you're going to do to prevent him from becoming president again? No, I think, uh, at least in my position, I haven't.
been very involved with, you know, I, and to my knowledge, at least there's not an organized effort, although I would love for there to be one. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I think on a larger scale, this this isn't just a Republican Party issue. Mm -hmm. I think right now it is so important for Democrats and for Republicans to come together to to bring light to this issue. You know, this isn't this isn't about political parties. I hope that there is one day where you and I can sit at this table and we can talk policy and have a productive policy conversation because I'm sure that we would be able to hopefully have a very productive conversation on that. But this next election, we're we're looking at a ballot or we're potentially going to be looking at a ballot where we're fighting for our democracy, mm -hmm. where the candidate that we're voting for and Americans have to vote for is either going to be able to sustain our, demo our democracy or is going to let it die.